All right, let's come into our usual warm up position, mountain pose. So bring your ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders lined up, sitting bones toward the floor, shoulder blades down, lengthen all the way up through your spine. Take a moment to breathe, drawing in energy and awareness. Exhaling stress and tension in balance. And focusing on your yoga perspective. Inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch your fingertips out. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch out to the front. Exhale, your hands behind you, just gently clasp them. Press them to the floor and lift your heart. Stretch your head back, feel the upper body expand. And then pivot at your hips coming over. And just gently move down, letting your hands rise and your head drop. Move your head gently side to side. Just let that neck release a little bit more. Lift your sitting bones, maybe. And don't forget to breathe. Spread your toes, get a lot of good balance and support in your feet. And then start at the bottom of your spine, wind all the way back up into the upper body back then. Dropping your shoulders, stretching your head away, spreading your toes out and breathing. And then inhale upright and release into mountain pose. Feel the spine more energized. And again, arms at shoulder level. Hands to your heart, stretch to the front, clasp the opposite way behind you, and again, hands toward the floor as so you lift your heart and stretch your head back. Exhale, pivot over, just slowly, gently coming forward, and bring your hands up. And again, just move a little bit, getting everything releasing that needs to release. Knees slightly bent, and work your way back up. Again, lift your heart, stretch the head away as you drop your shoulders. Feel that chest expand, feel the spine still stretching while it's back bending. And then inhale upright, and again, release into mountain pose. Take a moment, breathing, getting ready for our side stretch. Let's keep one hand down, the other one out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Push the hands away, lean through the side, and push the foot you're leaning away from slightly down. Make sure you're not leaning forward on this one, but straight to the side. And then inhale back to the center, release that arm, and bring the other one out. Palm toward the ceiling, and the right above your shoulders. Push the hands away as you push the foot down, you're leaning away from leaning straight to the side. And again, make sure you're not leaning forward, just sliding forward. Ribs opening, side stretch through the spine. And then inhale up and release. Feel the sides a little more activated and get the spine apart for our twist. So remember, base of the skull, base of the spine, stretching. Shoulders down, crown high, lengthen through the spine and Bring your arms out, <laughs> palms toward the ceiling, arms over your shoulders, clasp your elbows. And again, sink evenly into your feet and stretch the spine apart as you exhale into your twist. Take a breath, exhale, and breathe. Just deepen as much as you'd like on this forward position. Lifting your sitting bones, keeping the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. Breathing, just relaxing as you exhale. And then staying in the twist, inhale your way back up. Lift your heart, drop your shoulders, stretch your elbows and your head back. And again, upper body only back then when you're in the twist. Inhale upright, exhale around to the center, switch your arms, balance things out. And again, spread your toes, stretch things apart, and turn to the other side. A breath in, and exhale into your position. 
Take a moment there, wait on both feet as evenly as you can. Feel the back getting a good stretch while it's twisting. And then inhale again all the way up and lift your head. Lock your shoulders, keep that upper body focused toward the back bend, not the lower back. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the center, arms up, shoulders down, extended mountain. Feel your body. And then pivot forward, arms by your ears, push the sitting bones back, and drop into round dog, just hang. Stay there or pull your hands behind your legs and then pull your spine a little bit more stretched as you lift your sitting bones. Release your arms to the front if you've been clasping and work your way back into mountain pose. Take a moment there, feeling again all that activation through your spine. Bring your arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, extended mountain. And we'll go into our squat position. So get the weight on both feet evenly, spreading your toes. Sink into your feet as you push your sitting bones back behind you. Keep the knees behind the toes as you come into your squat. Arms by your ears throughout. So just as deeply into the squat as your knees are willing to do. And don't forget to breathe. Stretch out through the spine. Keep it nice and long and straight. And then leave with your fingertips and come on back up. Shoulders still there, and then swan dive forward, pivoting, dropping again into right dog, and just slowly, slowly, slowly deepen into that position as much as you want. Slide your hands up under your knees for our halfway up stretch. So elbows, knees, spine straight. Stretch open through the spine. And then back in the rag doll, and knees slightly bent, chin just a little bit in as you roll from the bottom of the spine again up into mountain pose. Take a moment there, feel your body, spread your toes on your favorite balance foot, and we'll do our little balance warm up. So get the whole bottom of your foot connecting. Don't break with those toes, spread them out, get a good base of support. Angle, knee, hip, shoulder lined up. Make sure that those toes are going straight to the front. And then when you're ready, sink into that foot. Make sure your core is activated as you bring the other foot up. So balance challenge, just stay there and circle your ankle or bring it up further toward your heart as much as you'd like. And again, circling the ankle so that we keep our balance support as appropriate for our bodies. And then flex and point, release that foot to the floor, shift to the other side, spread the toes out, make sure you're aligned all the way up, activating in the core, as push the sitting bones slightly down and the shoulder blades down so that spine is nice and supported and direct. And bring the other foot a little, circling the ankle, or more, again, circling the ankle wherever you end up. Just breathe, maximize or minimize that circling, making sure that you keep that ankle flexible. And then straighten the foot out, coming back into mountain pose. Hands to your heart, looking at them. Inhale, <clears throat> hands toward the ceiling. And another little back bend, following those thumbs back behind you as you lift your heart. Exhale, follow the hands all the way down. Again, a nice rag doll just hanging. Letting the backs of the legs get a good lengthening. By keeping those knees as straight as you can, lifting the sitting bones, stretching the back of the legs. And then knees slightly bent, and again, wind your way back to standing. Shoulders back and down, and let's do that one more time. Hands together, inhale, and again, follow the hands into the back bend. 
Come back straight up and swan dive this time. Arms out to the sides, curving forward. And again, just drop into ragdoll. Lift the sitting bones, straightening the knees. And then to your halfway up stretch. Sitting bones lifting. Elbows, knees, and spine straight. And then bending your knees, come on into our child pose transition. Hips back to your heels, hands, palms up, and forehead down toward the middle. Take a breath. Yes, relax. So we're going to do some strengthening today for the core and hips, a little bit of muscle building in that midsection. So go ahead and bring your feet out to the front into staff position. Sitting down slightly behind you, core, of course, activated, and then slowly roll to the neck. As you get all the way down, just take a moment there, relaxing your shoulders down. Sitting down slightly toward your heels, press your back gently down, bend your knees, feet in next to your sitting bones, and again, pressing the back down, lift the feet, and bring them up toward the ceiling, flex the heels, and put the thumbs under your lower back, and then press your leg back gently down. We're going to keep the heels flexed, the legs as straight as you can, and we're going to slowly lower one leg to the floor. Exhale as you go down. And inhale as you come up. And then do the other one. Just slowly lowering the leg and slowly raising the back. And this time, reverse the breathing. Inhale on your way down. Cover a moment at the bottom. And then exhale on your way back up. Same thing with the other one. Inhale slowly down. Keep that back pressing gently down. Inhale on the right leg. One more time with the first leg. Just coming down slowly, hovering, and then coming back up. And second leg, hovering, and returning. As you get back up, just pause a moment, pushing those feet up toward the ceiling as straight as you can, and bring your arms up also. So this one's called dead blow. So just, again, pushing that back toward the floor, but your thumbs aren't there to keep your awareness, so make your mind do that for you. And then take one hand in the opposite foot, and again, slowly lower toward the floor. Over a moment, and then come back up. As you get back up, we're going to reverse. So do the other hand and foot, slowly lowering toward the floor. Over a moment, and come back up. And first ones, covering as you get to the floor, and come back up. So you're not quite touching the floor, remember. You're just hovering above the floor as you get to your maximum point, whatever that is. And then coming back. One more time. First side. And back up. And the final one. Hovering. And return. Hands and feet both stretching straight up as much as you can. Keep them as straight as you can. And if you can, lower both your hands and both your feet all the way to the floor slowly. And as you get all the way down, just take a moment and relax. Sitting down slightly towards your heels, go ahead bending your knees, draw those heels in, knees toward your heart. Give yourself a little stretch across the back. And sit up. 
So we're going to come into <clears throat> hands and knees position. So <clears throat> wrist elbows and shoulders lined up. Knees right under your hips, feet straight back. And we're going to do the fire hydrant. So <clears throat> keep that core activated, supporting your low back. Don't let the back sag down. And we're going to keep the hips both pointing toward the floor. <clears throat> keep the leg at that 90 degree angle. <clears throat> Sorry. And bring the whole leg out toward the side. So it doesn't matter how high up you get. You don't want to lift your hip. You want to just bring the knee out and the leg out toward the side while those hips face the floor. And then bring it back down almost to the mat. And then up again. You can keep the foot flexed as you're doing that. And down. Make sure that hip is facing the floor. And down. And then bring the knee to the floor. So go your wrists if you need to. Remember, you can always pad with the mat folded under your knees or your wrists, and we'll do the other side. So I'm just going to stay in the same position. You can turn around if it's easier to see. And again, bringing the foot out, bring it out, but not the hip. Keep the hip facing the floor. You can flex the foot. And bring it back down, knee almost to the floor. And again, raise it up almost to hip level, but not quite because you don't want to go there. The hip bone is staying facing the floor. And then knee back down. And then once more up <clears throat> and back down. And of course, you want to do those more often on your own. But for now, we're going to stretch out into plank position. So, wrist elbows and shoulders lined up, straight line from your heels through your knees through your hips, activating that core up through the shoulders and the crown. Everything in as straight a line as you can be. If you need to, push your hips up just a little bit more so you're not sagging in the lower leg. Just pushing through the heels, out through the crown, shoulder blades towards your waist, breathing. And then lower your knees and bring your body back toward your heels, stretching through the shoulders and arms and circling the wrists. And then bring your body forward. <laughs> And onto your side, so the back of your body is against the back of your mat. Take a moment there and breathe. You can rest your head on your hands or them on your arm. Either way is fine. We're going to bend the knees, keeping the feet together, knees together. And again, we're going to work this hip joint a little bit. So put your hand on your hip because we want to keep the hip facing the front. And then just keep the feet together and raise your knee. And then slowly bring it down. Plan shells. So go ahead, bringing it up. And slowly lower. Up. And lower. Once more. Bring it up. And of course, we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to switch around so that I'm still facing you. But you can just roll over if that's easier for you. Arrange your body so you're along the back of the mat, everything nice and even. And the hips, one right on top of the other, feet right on top of the other. You can use this front hand for a little support. And again, otherwise, keep the hand on your hips so that you don't move that hip. And you keep it facing the front. Just low, raising the knee and slowly lowering it. Breathing into it. Relaxing as we exhale. And of course, again, on your own, you want to do these more often. But we have just a sampler in our yoga class.
<clears throat> and then exhaling, release that. And let's bring the body all the way down to our backs. So again, as you get onto your back, heels right next to your sitting bones, and knees straight up. We're going to press the back down or activate it. And then we're going to lift the ribs and slide the sitting bones back, just arching up through that lower back area. So a little building through that midsection of your back support. Pressing down and then arching up. And you can go as much or as little as your body wants. This is a low back strengthener they do in PT, as well as a core trainer. So really feel those core muscles contracting as you pull your whole spine down and then arch it up as much as you want with that space under your low back as you work. And again, do those a lot more on your own, but for now, just come back to neutral. Now we're going to slide the sitting bones slightly toward your heel so that back is nicely pressed down. Bring your right leg up and put it on the opposite knee. Right hand to the right knee and just gently push it away, strengthening through this hip area. And if you want a little bit more, you can bring your hand behind your thigh or around your shin and lift the foot off, left foot off to the floor while you're pushing away, but gently, gently with that right hand on the inside of the knee. Just do as much or as little as your body needs and that figure four. This is supposed to be really good for any low back pain or sciatica down your leg even. So this is excellent exercise to do whenever you need it. And again, bringing your foot to the floor, your hands to the mat, raise your leg, get it straightened out before you bring it back to the mat. And again, just relax a moment as you get ready to yeah, do the other side. Sitting bones toward your heels, lift the leg, cross it over, push it away. Stay there if that's where you need to be. Or again, you can lift the other foot, pulling it gently in while you're pushing away on that left knee. So you're on the inside kind of, of the knee thigh area, and you're behind either the thigh or the shin to pull in on that right leg. Always do what's right for your body, always your personal practice. And of course, we do it on both sides. Although you may have that sciatica feeling only on one, we want to make sure we're balancing things evenly through the body. And again, when you're ready to release, the foot it goes down, it gets up, your hands release, the leg straightens, and you bring the foot again to the floor. Bring your hands out to T position, extend your legs out, and we'll do our low back twist. So, sitting bones toward your heels, bending your right leg, put the foot on, drop the left thigh, and roll all the way to the left side. Head staying down, remember, so you're not overworking your neck. Left hand on your knee, keeping it on the floor for that lower back area, right hand above your shoulder, palm open, and just right at shoulder level, lower that hand toward the floor behind you. As you get to the floor or in that direction, just let that chest be open and turn your head to look toward that hand. So you're getting the neck area twist with that head turn. Keeping the knee on the floor gives you more low back twist if that's too much head under it. And just allow the shoulder and arm to come as far toward the floor as it wants. Middle back twist. Take a few breaths. Exhale, just releasing the ligament with the exhalations, letting gravity do the work of pulling it into your choice. But of course, we need to release, so just let go of the knee or leg and roll onto your back. Slide the foot near the other one and just feel that twist energy through your spine. 
Sitting bones towards your heels again, bending your left leg this time, flip to the right foot, hands, palms up, out of T position, and we're rolling this time all the way to the right side. Head down, knee down, and hands together. Bring the right hand to your knee, left hand above your shoulder, palm open. We'll look at it, and again, like gravity, bring your arm back toward the floor, straight at shoulder level. So just deepen your breath, exhale the tension, let that back go into its twist as much or little as your body needs today. Head turning, neck area twist. Keep that knee down if you love the low back, get into the twist and have it in the Gravity will bring your arm down when your body's ready to twist more. So let it happen, don't force it. Everything is always at your own pace. Deepening the breath, just relaxing, letting it happen. And then releasing your hand, roll onto your back. And again, slide the hip near the other one. Take a moment, feeling that twist energy. And we'll do one more gentle twist if you're ready for that. Hands to T position, palms up or down. Sitting bones toward your heels, draw your heels toward your sitting bones. Press your back down and draw the knees up off the floor. Keep them next to each other for a gentle twist or cross your leg over if you want a little bit more in the low back once more. And roll the knees over right at hip level toward the feet. Turn your head, of course, toward the arm there behind you. And keep those shoulders and shoulder blades down for that full middle back to twist. So the knees will come as far toward the floor as they want. You can put padding if you need to. And turn your head again only as much as you want in that area needs or things. Just breathe, deepening as much or little as you need. Exhaling tension, always just letting the twist happen. And to release, hands toward your hips, rolling onto your back. And cross the leg if you were close. You can bring the feet to the floor, straighten things out, and get ready for that twist to the other side. Knees above your hips, cross the leg if you want to, and roll it over. And again, let the knee come toward the floor as far as it wants on this side as you turn your head toward the opposite arm. Shoulders, shoulder blades down as much as you can keep them. Exhaling and just relaxing into your twist on this side. Always breathing with it. Exhaling tension, never forcing a twist. Doing what's right for your body, for your personal practice. Exhale, just relaxing. And of course, you hold those on your own longer. But for now, heels toward your hips, roll onto your back, and cross the legs if they are crossed, feet to the floor, straighten things out. Slide the legs out, bring your hands, palms up at your sides, and come into a first position relaxation. So toes toward each other, and then let your lower body relax. Lots of work through that foot and pelvis area today. So just let the lower body relax completely. More work, so again, let the belly soften. Yes, sinking the spine deep into that earth support. Let your shoulders release down into the earth. And hands, palms up, keeping that chest nice and open. Move your head side to side, release any tension in the neck or shoulders. And then just let your body grow heavy. Sinking into that earth embrace. Let it go. Breathe and deep. Relaxing deeply. And as you relax your body, just release thoughts of your body from your mind. Relaxing, breathing, knowing that other thoughts will come to your mind as you release those thoughts of your body. So let those thoughts disappear as well. No need to focus on the content of any thoughts. You can forget the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts flow in and out as easily as you can. 
Letting your body release into the earth's support. And your mind just float with that concentration, allowing your awareness to release your body and your mind. And just follow that awareness inward, finding the peace within, feeling your body, feeling your mind, feeling your being. Oh, um, focusing on peace. And of course, keep relaxing longer if you have the time today. And if it's time for the rest of your day, just again drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And again, moving your body gently, moving your legs and hips, maybe side to side, rotating those ankles, stretching your shoulders, breathing more fully, and stretching as much as you like. When you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, heels toward your hips, knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around for the appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, head and feet to the floor, roll to the side, and sit back up, getting ready or whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.